The Start Back tool is a simple and easy to use questionnaire that helps us to reliably identify those patients at greater risk of ongoing problems with their low back pain. And crucially, it helps identify those patients very likely to resolve with only minimal healthcare. Patients with low back pain are categorized as being low, medium, or high risk in terms of ongoing problems related to their low back pain. For the low risk category, we can have the confidence to manage patients in primary care with a focused one-off physiotherapy assessment, and then to discharge them with simple advice regarding self-management and signposting them to either internet-based resources or providing them with brief written advice. Sometimes the thought of filling out another questionnaire or form can seem just too much when we're under time pressures. However, this tool contains only nine items and typically it takes less than a minute to complete. And we can easily use this within our normal physiotherapy consultation. I tend to ask the patient simply to fill it out whilst they're in the waiting area. And I normally just write some notes whilst they're completing it. I specialise in the management of patients with low back pain and I find the Start Back tool to be simple and easy to use. It provides immediate and valuable information to subclassify patients with simple low back pain and then recommends a targeted treatment approach, both of which are research priorities. The latest draft of the NICE guidelines recommends the use of the Start Back tool to inform decision making about the stratified management of low back pain. Essentially, it allows physios and GPs to consistently identify patients with a good prognosis at their initial assessment, and so provide a focused, one-off physiotherapy session which includes relevant key pieces of advice to suit their individual needs. Our typical physiotherapy assessment will have a full objective and subjective components, and these will comprise biomedical with physical components and aspects, psychological covering distress aspects, and social aspects, all of which may be impacting on the patient. But research has shown that following this assessment, a clinician's instinct or clinical judgment, whether as a physiotherapist or as a GP, that instinct as to which patients with simple or non-specific low back pain may or may not require ongoing treatment, this instinct is not as reliable as we might think. In fact, research shows that quite often we may be over-treating these patients. The Start Back tool helps with this because it reliably identifies those patients who may just need a quick assessment, some reassurance and advice. Personally, I found the Start Back tool really easy to use and really quick to score. I've already had loads of positive experience with facilitating successful discharge with advice, um, and that's for my own low risk patients. It gives a really reliable and instant measure of where patients are with their low back pain. And if it's low risk, yes, it supports that discharge with advice route. Uh, but also, even if my patients have scored medium or high risk, it immediately just clarifies um, any of the yellow flag attitudes which might um, get in the way of their progress. So it helps me just to tune in and, and focus on each patient's specific concerns right from the start with the right uh, education and reassurance. The success of this approach depends on including a few basic things within our assessment many of which, as physiotherapists, we already do routinely. The assessment should include a thorough subjective history, including a screening for red flags, a physical assessment, good primary care advice, and encouragement to ask any questions about any specific concerns patients may have about their low back pain. Key to this approach is providing reassurance that their overall prognosis is good and that their own low back pain although perhaps severe and extremely bothersome, is of a benign nature. We need to include simple messages and advice about pain relief, appropriate physical activity levels, return to normal activities, including returning to work, avoiding bed rest, and the role of further investigations. Okay, Jill, so from your assessment today, we've used our tool and we've had a really good look at your back. 
and that means that your low back pain is being classified as low risk. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean that it's low in terms of the pain that you're actually experiencing. I do understand that it's quite severe for you and quite bothersome, but it is good news and it suggests that your condition isn't being caused by anything serious or nasty. The people in the low risk group happily get on very well if you do the right things and you don't usually require ongoing physiotherapy treatment. It's just important that you receive certain key pieces of advice. But if it's nothing to worry about, why is it so sore? Yeah, again, we do understand that it's a painful condition, but it's a fairly simple condition. And with these conditions, uh, if you do the right things, they do get better. Uh, look at it as a similar thing to twisting your ankle. There are very similar tissues involved in when you have an ankle sprain to this type of back pain. The thing with the back is it's far more sensitive area, so we tend to experience more severe pain. It's usually a, a lot more grief and a lot more bothersome for what still amounts to a simple sprain or strain. Because it is a more sensitive area, uh, certain things will trigger the pain for a while. Uh, and the key thing for you to take from today is that when you feel it, for simple activities like moving around or bending, you aren't harming it by remaining active. Because it is a more sensitive area, it's important that you take your over-the-counter painkillers regularly uh, and that will help you to better manage the pain and this will allow you to remain active, which is always the most important thing and the best thing to do for this type of low back pain. But would it not be helpful to have an x-ray? Sure. X-rays, Jill, that really only show the bones of your spine. And we know from loads of research that this type of back pain which you have is being caused by the soft tissues. Now, these soft tissues won't show up on an x-ray. And also, from your history and from your assessment, well, there's no reason at all to ever suspect that you have, for example, a broken bone. So an x-ray really won't provide us with any more useful information. It certainly won't help us manage this condition any more effectively. So it's not really an appropriate test for what you have. Well, that's, that's reassuring. And you've had, I know you've had a good look at my back today, um, but what kind of things can I do to help myself? Sure, because it is a common condition, we, we do know quite a lot about this and research all over the world has identified certain key things. In the first instance, uh, this uh, exercise sheet which I've provided you with today is definitely important and that will help. Uh, if you do these regularly as I've prescribed, you should find that your pain becomes less bothersome, you become more free in your movement uh, and that will help. You should look at that as sort of like first aid for your back. If you perform them, then your pain will become less bothersome as the days go on. Another key principle is that you remain generally active. And the simple way to achieve that is through simply walking. Now, walking when you have low back pain can often be a challenge because obviously you're sore. But we know that research all over the world agrees that people who walk more while they have the pain get rid of it quicker. But it's not a case of going for a 10 mile hike. It's little and often, so three short walks are better than one long walk. So you have to pace your activity, and that same principle applies to all your regular activities throughout the course of the day. So it's this little and often we talk about relative rest, which means you remain active, but you don't overdo any one uh, activity in one go. Okay, and what about work? Should I keep going at work? Can you remind me again what it is you do, Jill? I'm a receptionist, so I'm sitting for most of the day and I do some filing. Yeah, so mainly desk-based stuff. Uh, it, the first thing is, it, it's great that you've remained at work. That's absolutely the best thing to do for this type of condition. Uh, you don't have a particularly heavy job by the sounds of things. Uh, you are sitting for prolonged periods though, so it's important that you change your posture and you get up and move around throughout the course of your day. But uh, by remaining at work, you've absolutely done the right things. Even if uh, when you're having severe pain, you restrict your duties, or perhaps even have slightly shorter hours for, for a short while, remaining at work means that you'll get rid of this pain quicker. Thank you. So in the low risk patients, it is important to acknowledge with them that we understand that they are in a lot of pain, but to stress that their outlook is good and the pain has no serious or sinister cause. Luckily, in the low risk group, we don't tend to see a lot of yellow flag attitudes, but obviously, if any are picked up, we need to offer reassurance 
and advice to deal with, for example, fear avoidance or pain equals harm type beliefs. Ongoing treatment is not recommended for the low risk group and neither is the traditional physiotherapy route of perhaps placing the patient on hold. The recommended option is to discharge them with a worsening statement. This is the same model as is currently employed in NHS 24 across Scotland and it places the onus upon the patient to seek further care if required. The main driver for adopting the Start Back approach was about providing the best evidence-based care for our patients. It's based on international research which we then verified locally in Glasgow with an RCT using our own specific demographics. Besides its obvious benefits for subclassifying low back pain and targeting patients towards the best treatment, the approach helps physiotherapists avoid overtreatment and this in turn reduces waiting times for routine and urgent physiotherapy appointments. It also reduces the number of patients being referred on to other services such as orthopaedics. This not only provides better value for money, but it achieves all these things while still having good clinical outcomes and high levels of patient satisfaction. Okay Jill, so this condition typically has what we call a sawtooth pattern of recovery. And that just means, you know, it tends to calm down a little, flare up a little, calm down, flare up. So it has this sort of good spell, bad spell type presentation. So it can be a little bit frustrating where often you think, you know, it's, it's resolved, it's gone, and then it sort of rears its head again. Just be reassured that that's, that pattern's completely typical for this, totally normal. Uh, and the good news is that the bad spells just tend to fizzle out as long as you remain active. It's not the sort of a condition that requires ongoing physiotherapy as long as you follow the advice we've given you today and you use information on the resources I've signposted you to. This should be easily self-managed. So I'm going to be discharging you from physiotherapy today. Should your symptoms persist for any reason or worsen or should you have any new symptoms that are causing you concern at all, then obviously follow the information and the resources I've given you and the ones that I've signposted you to today and also see your GP for a review.